This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Do you think that you can change? The interesting thing about that question is that the answer you give to that question will determine the answer to that question. If you don't believe that you can change and progress, then you won't. If you do believe you can, you can. God has a will for your life. There's a transcendental purpose for your being alive. What are the limits which you in your own mind have set on your life? Science has learned much about the concept of territory in nature. The parrotfish, for example, will usually only swim back and forth along a limited portion of its coral reef and will never, ever go beyond it. The snowshoe rabbit, even a better illustration, will hardly ever go farther than a quarter of a mile from the place where it was born. And if a dog is chasing this rabbit, it will run to the outer edge of its territory, then turn sharply and scamper off in yet a different new direction, but never will it dare to go beyond where it has lived for all of its life. Many a man or woman, perhaps you yourself, Perhaps you likewise have never dared to go beyond the familiar territory of your customary beliefs and accepted majority opinion, your prejudices, your assumptions. Very few mortal men and women upon this planet have possessed the courage through planetary history to venture into new spiritual and philosophic territory. But have you the quest in your soul to escape the confines of settled mediocrity and enter into new realms of faith and hope and love and experience and the discovery, the ultimate discovery of the reality of God, the power of God in your life and the will of God for your life. Regardless of your circumstances, remember problems are camouflaged possibilities. A weed is only a plant whose uses have not yet been found. God has a plan and purpose, uses for your life, and even mediocre abilities or materials can be employed for higher purposes if you will choose. Whatever you have available to yourself, you can turn it to higher purposes. God has a will for you if you will seek it. Said the Master, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you shall receive. There is an ultimate level of dedication, one degree and yet an infinity of degrees above the many lower strata of spiritual commitment possible in a human life. Some of Jesus' apostles probably attained to this and others did not, yet the deepest place in your soul knows, in you this moment you know, and the infinite God of this universe knows, that whether or not you have sealed your decision to serve God with this final stamp of unqualified commitment is the great issue of your life. It is the greatest choice you will ever face, and you're facing it this moment here and now. Don't be a slave to the failures and the memories, the regrets and remorses of the past. Don't focus your mind constantly on the past. There's no future in it. Paul Revere, the American patriot and leader of the colonial revolution, lived to be 83 years old. But even though styles and fashions changed greatly during his lifetime, Revere was a bit eccentric, and he always insisted upon continuing to wear the very same cut and style of clothing and hat that he had worn during his famous ride back in the year 1775. People love to remember their finest moments. But you cannot dwell in years gone by, and you must not, therefore, dwell upon years gone by. You must not love history so dearly that you refuse to make history, new history. You must not forsake the present in reverence for the past. And this is equally true in religion as in government, science, and economics. God calls you to a new valor and vigor for today in serving God's will today, this month, this year, this moment. God calls you not to a dying tradition but to a living faith, living as the son or daughter of God, you are. That is who and what you are. That is why you are. That is the reason for which you were created. God loves you. You are a son or daughter of God with eternal life lying before you if you begin to live by eternal values, truth and beauty and goodness and in love for God and others. In fearfulness, multiplied millions of human beings cling to the quiet coves and unrippled harbors 
of complacency and indecision, never suspecting the keen sense of adventurous exhilaration, awaiting, if you will dare to sail out upon the high seas of the Spirit, to put your life totally, entirely, in the care and keeping of God, and trust God. And as Jesus said in these four incredibly powerful words, have faith in God. Have faith in God. And God can and will transform your life and empower you to live as you never have lived before, productively and in joy and in love. For said the Master, the kingdom of God is within you. The truth is most human beings seldom apply, seldom even begin to apply the least bit of their powers. And one of the greatest powers you possess is persistence. When Dr. Charles Steinmetz, the internationally famous electrical scientist, decided that years ago he wanted to learn how to drive a car, he had to learn to drive a car, he went out to practice for the very first time, got behind the wheel, and promptly ran into a tree, got out of the car, threw the keys down, and gave up on the project then and there. If Dr. Steinmetz had taken that same attitude toward his electrical experiments and his scientific work, giving up at the very first failure, his name would hardly be emblazoned in the science texts as his name is emblazoned. Greatness happens not by chance or accident, but by undaunted, insistent persistence. Refuse to forfeit your highest dreams and spiritual ideals. Live true to the best you know. Commit yourself totally to the will and wisdom of God and discover the delight of living adventurously. He said, Jesus, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. This is the greatest project you will ever undertake in your life. Begin this project here and now. It's no time to prepare for battle when the enemy is in the camp. No time to make ready to meet a foe when he's broken down your front door. There is such a thing as putting off your preparation until it becomes too late. A man may neglect the care of his health until it becomes too late. A student may let the proper time to prepare for a profession glide away till it's too late. A farmer may neglect to plow and sow until that year it's too late for the plowing and sowing. A man on a rapid stream near a waterfall may neglect to make efforts to reach the shore until it becomes too late, and so in spiritual matters as well. It is easy to put off from childhood to youth, from youth to manhood or womanhood, from manhood or womanhood, to old age, and it can become too late. You only have one life to live on this earth. Give it to God and live it for God with faith and with persistence. Patience is needful. Time for a grimsly terrible parable. There was a certain man sitting and fishing out by a stream. For over two hours, there was another man who walked up and just stood and watched this fellow fishing. Finally, the fisherman turned to this other man and said, you know, you've been watching me for so long. Why don't you get a line to pull and try fishing yourself? The other fellow said, no, I don't have the patience for it. The truth is that that is a quality you need in every aspect of life, material and spiritually. Patience, persistence, only in this fashion can you grow spiritually. Daily seek the will of God. Let this be your ultimate, utmost ideal, and growth will begin, perhaps not consciously, but real spiritual growth. Become a person with purposes so pure that God can use you in any situation of life. Dare to say to God and mean it, having set my hand to the plow, I will not turn back. Before me may lie rocky soil and unplowed land, but having set my hand to this plow, I will not turn back. Give all you have, all you are, all you hope to be, your fears, your frustrations, your worries, your remorse, your regrets, your guilt, everything you have, turn it over to God and ask God to make you new from the inside out. And in joy and in faith, you can begin to live Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, you'll be free at last in your soul, in your heart, in your inward self. You'll know why you're alive, who you are, and can begin to experience the words, the meaning, the real meaning of the words. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. There was a certain little boy who asked his father one time if anybody had ever seen God. His father dismissed the question. 
Little boy asked the minister the same question. He dismissed the question. Determined to get some sort of an answer, he finally asked an old man who was the custodian at his school, and other people might have thought this old fellow unable to comment on such a profound question. But he did have an answer to the question, has anybody ever seen God? The old man said, sometimes I don't think I see anything else but God. God is real. Seek and you shall find. The Japanese spiritual leader, Kagawa, when he was threatened with blindness and he lay for months in the dark with scorching pain in his eyes, wrote these words, my health is gone, sight is gone, but as I lie forsaken in this dark room, God still gives me light. At the center of things there is a heart. On yonder side of darkness there is light. Oh, wonder words of love, he wrote. God and every inanimate thing speak to me. And thus, even in the darkness, I feel no sense of loneliness. Prayer continues. And in the darkness, I meet God face to face. I am being born, born of God. I am constantly praising God for the joy of the moments lived with him. You too can find that joy of finding and knowing God if you'll simply have the faith to claim it right here, right now, this very moment. And then write to us, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. The mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. We want to hear from you. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer. All this literature, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation. When you write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address. Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.